I watched the efforts to extract truthful information from the Attorney General. I suppose you could hold him in contempt. They'd never get that vote in the House. I suppose you could hold back his salary, but you'd never get that vote in the Senate. So it's just frustration. The best you can do is just expose and embarrass and comment about it. Well, or review, I guess, 44,000 hours of tape that wasn't yet released and identify yourself through looking at the video of the FBI agents that might or might not have been there as his case, but he could have just answered the question and dispelled the rumors and the suspicions and the innuendo, but by keeping it quiet and refusing to answer, I think he feeds into the narrative. He does. I think the truthful answer is there were undercover FBI agents there, and he doesn't want to uh, open that uh, Pandora's box. On the other hand, I don't think Kevin McCarthy should have had those tapes. They should have been subpoenaed by the government. They're either evidence of crimes or they're exculpatory uh, evidence. There you go. Why is Kevin McCarthy hanging on to something that is vital to either a conviction or an exoneration? That has been the most disturbing element of this when you hear all the talking heads, both Mitch McConnell and and, and Chucky Schumer and people in between, getting outraged over the release of this. And I keep thinking to myself, you're talking about people's freedoms, liberties, their lives are at stake. They're going to be locked up. They've already been locked up. If there's anything in there that makes an argument for the defense that could put reasonable doubt in the minds of the trier of fact, then you got to give it to them. If there's Correct. nothing, there, then they'll have nothing to show. So We're incarcerating I, people. I suspect that the government was aware of the existence of this culpatory information. And under Brady, which is the Supreme Court opinion that requires the government to share exculpatory information, information that helps the defendant or hurts the government's case, the government doesn't have to share what it doesn't have. Right. So if that stuff is in the hands of Kevin McCarthy, the legislative branch, rather than the DOJ, the executive branch and a defendant being prosecuted by the DOJ makes a Brady demand, as all defendants do. It would be malpractice not to do that. And the government says, we don't have it. The government is actually telling the truth, even though they suspect or know that it exists and somebody else that they don't control has it. They should have had it. They should have revealed it. This is another scandal, which is below the radar because the Mitch McConnells and Chuck Schumers and even the people that hate Fox that just want to rip into Tucker Carlson probably lack a basic understanding of the way criminal prosecutions work. And so this issue, this point that you and I are raising now has not been raised elsewhere. Well, I just kind of wonder if any of the defense attorneys in the prior trials of any given January 6th defendant asked or subpoenaed or otherwise asked to disclose all of the videotape evidence, and here's why. This is a ridiculous distinction the Justice Department is making. you got a U.S. attorney part of the Justice Department, which is part of the federal government, saying, well, we don't have it. That's the property of the legislative branch, and I guess we're just not allowed to ask for it. That sounds preposterous. Well, that is ridiculous. They can subpoena anything they want. I mean, this is clearly either evidence of crime or evidence of government complicity in crime or exculpatory material. If I was a lawyer for one of the defendants who's now in jail, I would subpoena from Fox all 40,000 hours of tapes, and I and my people would be going through there looking for, quote, newly discovered evidence, close quote, which is a basis for a new trial, particularly newly discovered evidence that was in the hands of the government. And I suppose uh, you probably reacted the way I did to the judge who denied a motion to continue the trial to a future date to give his client and the lawyers time to review some of this information, which very well could be exculpatory. The judge said, no, you know why? We're just not going to do it. You haven't articulated anything specific in that that you believe is going to be exculpatory. And more importantly, you're going to slow down the wheels of justice and all these other trials that we've got lined up everybody's going to want to look at it and so no that is not a legal basis to deny someone's motion for that evidence correct you know the only time i got in trouble with my bosses people that really run the courthouse when i was on the bench is when i would grant adjournments like that why is this case on your docket for so long what difference does it make i'll try another case these people need more time to prepare i'm not sitting here twiddling my thumbs give them the time to prepare so that when their case comes to me it's resolved on the merits not on we didn't have enough time and you know one more layer on this the idea that they had the january 6th committee and obviously the prosecutors who have presented some of this video in court 
they had this hand-selected slice of 12,000 or 14,000 hours to the exclusion yeah. of the balance that was there. Somebody had to go through and do an initial assessment to whittle it down to just those particular cameras and those particular screenshots as produced by the ABC guy and for general public consumption to perpetuate the narrative that the Democrats have. Yes, fully agreed.